Conservative artist tosses pizza at New York City Town Hall in response to a coal-fired oven crackdown that could cost owners $20,000. The insane rules drafted by the Department of Environmental Protection would aim to slash carbon emissions by up to 75%, they say. Our next guest has already invested $20,000 on an air filter system in the anticipation of a mandate. Paulie G, the owner of Paulie G's in Greenpoint, joins us now. Paulie, your, your uh, response to the city cracking down on you guys. Well, I think it's, it's ridiculous. I think it's like killing a fly with a sledgehammer, first of all. There's, they say that 100 places would have to do this. Yeah. The, the mayor compared the smoke that comes out of these 100 ovens to the fires that were in Canada. He said that, okay, and, which is ridiculous. Well, if you're watching this, it was expecting the Fast Five. Uh, since it is the holiday weekend, it's a long weekend, obviously. Tomorrow is the 4th of July. Uh, we put Fast Five over to the side. It'll be back next Monday uh, about this time period. So do tune in for that. Um, I just want to take this moment. And I tell you, we, we were a little light this week. And, and, the re and like I said, it's, it's, it is a holiday week. And it is one of the slowest weeks for uh, YouTubers on there because, you know, hey, everybody's relaxing, barbecuing, and that's what we're doing. We're barbecuing this week. Um, we're going to have some good time with some hamburgers and some hot dogs out there. Uh, enjoy the weather. Uh, hopefully tomorrow will be really, really good weather for us here in New York City. But speaking of the weather, and I just want to take this moment, um, the insanity that has been happening in new york lately and, and this is not the crime you know we've discussed many times about the crime the um the legalization of cannabis in new york and how much of a failure it has been but what has been going on also on the other side and on the same aisle by the same people is all these regulations that are beginning to stranglehold onto New York. And there's similar sh shit that, uh, that was put into play in California. And it looks like that New York is, uh, the New York politicians here uh, the, uh, on the left, they want to go into that same direction by banning this, banning that, putting this regulation, you got to have this, got to have that. And it has gone insane, over-regulating uh, the population is not the way to go because you know you have a lot of people out there putting out false information yeah and we'd say false information because basically a lot of this information is being debunked there are a lot of experts out there that says no it's not going in in this direction and all you have to do is stand outside if you're in New York take a deep breath and smell that the air is clean you know the air is clean here in new york with the exception of that little time period that we had gotten that smoke uh from canada which was not new york's fault but there are those out there that want to put the blame on things that saying see because there was a fire in canada uh we have to ban this and that but before we get into this, I just wanted to take this moment to thank all of you for clicking on this video. If you haven't yet, hit that like, share this video with friends, family, enemies, and hopefully today I've earned your subscription. And for those of you already subscribed, please make sure you are still subscribed as YouTube tends to remove uh, subscriptions from time to time. And remember, if you wish to help support this channel there are several links in the description below including a merch shop with new anime themed shirts and mugs now available and to celebrate america's birthday this july 4th we are offering an additional 10 percent off your purchase use the promo code july 4th which we've extended the expiration date till july 10th once again, thank you for your support, 
and make sure you hit that notification bell to make sure you receive all our notifications on Cutecast TV and all of our programming across all of our social media platforms. Thank you once again. Recently, you, you know, you've heard the situation that they want to ban gas stoves in New York City, which is the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard of. Now, I myself, I lived in Florida. And one thing in Florida, a lot of the places down there, uh, especially South Florida, uh, were electric stoves. And I found I had a, let's put it this way, it wasn't as easy to cook on a electric than I can do with a gas stove. Yeah, you know, you can cook on it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just the way, you know, it, I mean, what you're doing is you, you, you might as well use a hot plate at that point, because that's all it is. It's just a gigantic hot plate. And the thing about it is you have to always remember this. When the power goes out, what happens? You're going to be barbecuing because <laughs> the electric stove is not going to work. A gas stove is at least going to work. You know, you can still at least use your gas stove, you know, during a blackout. And, you know, you hear from a lot of the, oh, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. We're not going to. And meanwhile, secretly, they're trying to do it. The newest thing now. And it's really pissed the hell out of a lot of people here in New York. And it's, I mean, it's already reaching into Connecticut because you're hearing those in Connecticut are even um, commenting on this as well. Is that the, the Department of Environment Protection wants in New York wants to put a halt on coal fire ovens. Coal, you know, it's a coal and wood fire pizza oven. Which is, is a total, it's, it's a total insanity. Because they said, well, it'll improve the air quality. I said, last time I saw the API, or is it the API? Uh, it's the API air quality. Last I learned, it's below 50. It still is now, currently. And that's, that's considered good air quality for New, for New York. But meanwhile, you have those in office that says it's not good enough. It's not good enough. We got to re re reduce our carbon, you know, and all that. But we're at 0.4. How much lower do you want? They're like, well, we want zero emissions. Do you understand that CO2 levels is important for plant growth, for trees, for oxygen, to, uh, oxygen creators that, you know, the plants create the oxygen? Killing their food source, one of their food sources, is not a good thing. See, this is why you have the insanity on here. The other half of this is, is that there's always someone want to make a book out of this. And you know that th that's true. We're going to read a little bit of this from the editorial board from the New York Post. Adam should sigh with the public versus the green assault on New York City pizza. We don't want to hurt businesses in the city and we don't want to hurt the environment. So let's see if we could find a way to, to get the resolutions we're looking for. Mayor a Eric Adams hedged Monday on the pizza war. This is last Monday. Uh, that implies that he knows the City Department of Environment Protection's climate war on coal and wood fire pizza ovens is ridiculous, but doesn't want to annoy the Greens by saying so. Problem is, mindless green mandates are swiftly moving from annoying the rest of us to causing serious damage. Yes, Local Law 38 in 2015 tasked the DEP with writing regulations on emissions control to cut restaurants, cook stoves, odors, smoke, and particulates matter by 75%. But the bureaucrats held off for eight years. Couldn't they have kept on stalling? The pizza menace comes from under a hundred restaurants, and as Marco Morano points out for the post, such our ovens carbon footprint is barely measurable. It could take 849 years to equal a year carbon emission from the U.S. climate envoy John Kerry's private jet. Like so much of the green, green fight to save Mother Earth, the effort is far more performative than substantive. 
Back in 2015, Kerry himself confessed that if we somehow eliminated all of our domestic greenhouse gas emissions, guess what? There was still wouldn't be enough to offset the carbon pollution coming from the rest of the world. And that is correct. Understand this. And people don't realize this. Our air is clean here in the U.S. Yeah, there's some areas that may be better than others or worse than others. But overall, when you look at the perspective of how our air quality here versus, say, India or China, when you get to third world countries, they're not using gas stoves or electric stoves. They're burning some uh, wood and fuels that are more toxic to the air than you would think because basically they can't afford what we have here in the United States. That's why I've always said the one major problem with, the, with third world nations is they were never allowed the industrial revolution. If they would have gone through the industrial revolution like the rest of the planet, th there wouldn't be a third world nations. Yet, lawmakers across the West persist in this charade, including endless demands for electrification of motor vehicles, stoves, heat, and so much more. Even though through electricity comes an overwhelming burning of carbon fuels and will for the seeable future. Demanding lets this politician posture as green heroes, but only if the rules actually start hitting home. Here's hoping that the Battle of the Pizzerias proves a turning point in ending this climate theater. Adam could lead the way by standing up for New York slices against the green goons. He's not going to. He's, he's going to pick in between. You have to understand that. He's a politician. He's on the left. He's going to be in between this whole situation. And as far as electric goes, here, here, here is the big problem. And people will say, well, we could go solar and wind. Guess what? Where do you think those come from? Where do you think all that machinery and all that, all that material that it takes to build those solar panels comes from? It comes from digging into the ground. If you see the pictures of the children that are, you know, in Africa and other countries and in China that are digging into the ground just to get those materials uh, to make solar panels. And the thing about it is there are pollutants in it. They haven't figured out how they're going to dispose of these units as of yet. Even though they say they have, and they really lying to you because they basically give it about 25 more years and we're going to hear the worst of this situation. The other half is, is the, the damage to the environment itself. We're hearing stuff like whales are coming across shore and dying and you know it looks like it's wind turbines and then you have animals on desert land and other places where there's uh, a solar farm and they're dying out as well you know like uh, i think what is it the one in the mid is it in the the west that uh, turtles are dying out there a specific specific species of turtle because of the amount of heat and everything that that's generated in that area but you also got to remember this and already the Germans know this and a couple of other countries. I mean, you have over, I think, is it Sweden or Norway? They're looking to put um, more oiling rigs into play now because they already know the problems on there. The Germans are buying uh, energy sources from the French. What happens when everybody is driving uh, electric cars and using electric stoves and so much the grid cannot handle it because we don't have enough juice to handle it. The only way you're going to get to do this is to build more coal fire plants or go the cleanest direction, nuclear energy. That's right, folks, nuclear energy. And there is one being finished off in Atlanta right now. There is one, if you look, you look, Closely, they're not talking about it. It's almost, I think it's almost completed in Atlanta, Georgia right now. And when you look at the, you know, they're talking about pizza ovens and it hurts the environment. You know, all these pizza ovens are, you know, pizza ovens have been around for 
a long time. I mean, the, these ovens have been around forever. I mean, there's the, uh, I forgot the name of the pizzeria in Coney Island. It's fantastic. And he's still that same oven. And it's, it's going on daily and great pizza coming out of it. Constantly. I think it's Lombardi's. It's Lombardi's is, is that one. And then there's Napoli. Uh, and there's a couple of others that are, are fantastic. Fantastic pizza. And see, here's the other part of this. And this is where, you know, you have to think, put this in your mind. Think about this for a minute. Why the push? Why the real push? Because there are others out there that want to make money. Especially those in the industry to, to sell um, filtration systems to these restaurants. Yes, that's right. You know somebody is going to make money up, up, up on this. I mean, this they're, they're talking, what is it, $20,000? $20,000 to, and that's just the minimum to change your filtration system if you're able to. And they said, well, we'll give you, uh, if it doesn't, you know, you can't do it, uh, we'll give you, you know, a little sign off says, hey, it's, a, you know, you're okay. Bullshit. They're going to do it. They're going to figure out a way and say, well, we'll do this work around. And you know, they're told, it says, do this work around, make sure they pay the money that they're supposed to do. You know, this, this is what happens. You know, with all this legislation, there's always somebody that has their hand out and says, listen, we'll pay you this as long as you get us money from all these people. Yeah. Who is going to benefit? Remember, who's going to benefit on all these changes completely across the board? There's always somebody to make money on this. And it, it, this is a constant factor. You know, I love my pizza. You know, there are a couple places here where I live that make some good pizza. And there's some, some that make some bad pizza. You know, sometimes you got to take a trip. I got to take a trip over to Brooklyn and my, his pizza over there. You know, he's on uh, Instagram every once in a while. Uh, makes a hell of a pizza, especially the Sicilian with a little pesto sauce on it. Oh, such a good, such a good pizza. And there are others. And I'll tell you this, when I was a kid, God rest my uncle's soul, my uncle had a pizzeria next to my home I grew up with on there. Trio's Pizza. Yeah, that's right. It was Trio's Pizza on 3rd on Avenue there. And, you know, he had it there, ran the business in there till his passing, and he left it to his partner. His partner let, ran it for about another, at least another uh, decade or so before he got out of the business. And now it changed over once it became a Mexican restaurant and something else. Now I think it's empty now, the, the, the shop. But the thing about it is everybody loves pizza. Who hates pizza? You know, not many people hate pizza because you can have it in many uh, different ways. You know, vegans can have pizza. You know, people who like to eat meat, look, you're going to eat pizza. People who, you know, want to eat more healthy can eat pizza. I mean, you can put a salad on a pizza. Caesar salad. You know, they're all different variations. Yeah, it can be a little fattening. But the thing about it is, hey, you can work that off. It's bread. You know, what's the difference between having a burger with bread on it or... You know, your, your breakfast with toast. You know, you're having a slice of pizza. It's an enjoyable thing. So remember this 4th of July. When someone says, what are you thankful for? I say, I'm thankful for the pizza that I'm able to get at my corner pizza shop. Give me pizza or give me death. So comment below. Let me know your thoughts to this nature. Because I am really ticked off at New York of all the bullshit that basically I, you know, I've lived, you know, a long time here. You know, there was a 10 year span. I was living in Florida. There was a different life there. But living up here, there were many things that happened. You know, it was different with the left back then as far as legislation and all that. Now it's like, 
Let's get rid of everything everybody enjoys. These are the new Puritans, like that book that's out says, take the fun out of life. They want you to eat bugs. That's what they want you to do. The thing that can harm you the probably the most to eat bugs. So tell me in the comments on there, share this video, hit the notification bell. Don't forget to hit the like. And maybe today is the day I earn your subscription. So have a happy 4th of July if you're here in the US. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good holiday. We'll uh, check out Memo with the show on Wednesday and Thursday. We'll be returning in. There won't be one on uh, 4th of July. Go out, enjoy yourself. Go to a barbecue or something. Go to the beach if you're at good weather anywhere, amusement park, anything except Disney. Don't go to Disney. So until next time, Bye-bye now.